a lot of people didn't know how to do it today, I just want to talk about something like what they kind of, I suppose, have the record. They are, to be honest, they talked about this, I suppose, again, say, because it was passed down through my family. And, you know, I told her to share it. I told her to share it because it's obviously, you know, commemorations of the War of Independence, obviously, to, it's, uh, obviously, that's happened at the moment of time. Um, obviously, you know, on my, on the other side of my family, on the local side of the family, on the other side of my family, my brother's side, um, obviously, I had um, a great, I don't know what she was, a great auntie or something, I can't, you know, remember, and having to remember, but it was, it was my mother's mother's mother, so, I think, yeah, probably white, I don't, I don't know what that makes, um, but um, obviously she did take part in the War of Independence, um, uh, I think it was Cunningham Mon, wasn't it, Cunningham Mon, yes, um, the other women's, the women's association, um, she obviously, you know, hit people in the house, <laughs> hit IRA people in the house and, you know, hit weapons, hit loads of weapons for the IRA in Cavan and for Marlon and different IRA when the one, the one from, say, let's just say, let's just take for an example, let's just say, um, awfully, say awfully arrest me to come up to Cavan, you know, escape the OIC and the Black and Tans, um, you know, come up to Cavan, hide out in her house, like, she was responsible for 50 odd IRA people, you know, fading the British authorities. And hiding in our house. Uh, and, you know, we're hiding ridiculous. Like, the amount of arms that were in our house. You know, nearly three or four <laughs> arms. Firearms. Like, there was a God knows how many. Because there used to be... Like, she was she was a fighter. She was a fighter. And that's where I'm kind of getting my... You know, as loads of people in my family would say, you know, I'm kind of getting like her. Because I'm... A, you know, if you push me too far, you know, I'm kind of like, oh, I'm a fighter. I won't give up. I won't surrender. How simple as that? Um... You know, they did raid a few OIC bar barracks around here and took a few weapons out of it and, you know, things like that. And annoyed the British authorities too. They did, she did actually help her through the few uh, sabotage missions. She didn't kill anybody, but, you know, there were very much against kind of killing OIC policemen, I suppose, back, t uh, back then. Because a good lot of them they knew, you know, kind of. <laughs> and the funny thing was, you know, the OIC didn't really, they weren't really that fond of the British authorities around here at that time. Um, because uh, actually what happened in 1916 and all that, there's a lot of them actually left the OIC in Cavan because of what happened, because of the way they were treated, you know, the old pe the, you know, Irish people, and they kind of, you know, understood that they died for something. And, you know, they kind of were more sympathetic, to be honest, than, you know, many other counties, to be honest, the OIC here. And, you know, obviously there was a good lot of few black and tans, and obviously, you know, they were very determined to kill some of them black and tans. But, you know, they were very, like, the, honestly, the sabotage missions they went out and, the, you know, the sabotage, loads of things, they used to block roads to the black and tans would go down and, you know, they always see just to annoy them, you know, just to annoy them, just to purely annoy the British authorities. Because, you know, the barricaded roads and the British authorities spread out and I was cleaning up the roads. Like, put big, bar you know, big carts in the roads and they have to move them and, you know, ca cause the black and tans hours and hours to move them. And, you know, just cause and hassle generally, to the British authorities. And, you know, obviously she was commemorated very, very highly. She was given six or seven high, the highest orders in the land when Ireland became free, obviously, after World War Two, She was given loads of medals by Emma de Valera. Um, she wasn't too fond, like, in the Irish Civil War, and I have to say that she didn't really, she never, she was heartbroken, really, in the Irish Civil War. She even told, like, I know that the was passed down. Um, she was heartbroken. She didn't want to take anybody's side. She didn't want to fight her you know, anybody. Because, you know, everybody was united in the Irish War of Independence. Everybody was against one common enemy. And, you know, you know, big split in the Civil War. And she, you know, she just said, you know, she's staying out of it. Simple as that. And obviously, well, she wasn't too fond of Emma de Valera. Um, she didn't like Emma de Valera. She was, and she was obviously heartbroken with Michael Collins and Article. She would have been more sympathetic to the Irish Free State, to the pro-treaty forces, than she would have been to the anti-treaty forces. Um, but she was heartbroken, and you know, and she did. She did suffer. She did suffer a lot back then because, you know, it was tough. It was not easy. Um, you know, to go through year like four years of you know kind of war. You know, kind of more or less war for her, because you're getting up early. You know, you're hiding the people. You're trying to you know trying to scrape money to try and buy food and, you know, to get that and to feed the you know people hiding in your house. And, you know, at any time the Black Italians could have just barged in, you know, barged in and killed them all. You know, but they didn't. 
like the OIC, like they actually said us, some of the OIC knew who, you know, where they were hiding and, you know, because they were very sympathetic towards them. You know, they wouldn't, wouldn't really too bothered. They wouldn't, they didn't really care at the time because, you know, because they wouldn't really too bothered because, you know, as they were saying, the black and tans there, it's up to them to do it. Um, but anyway, the Irish, obviously the war OIC, they were all white OIC around here, they weren't bad OIC. Um, because as I said, they were very sympathetic. As she said in the warm words, they were very sympathetic towards them. They wouldn't, you know, they wouldn't, uh, there was a few of them, obviously there's one, there's always one that has to spoil the party. But, um, you know, they never got waited. They never got waited, thankfully. Like, the man of firearms, like, she gives them up, uh, she gives them up actually, after the Civil War, I suppose 1937, 1936, going into World War Two, she only she gives them to the Irish Free State Army. So before the war, they, she gave them to the Irish Free State Army and ha- give them into the, you know, to the army because obviously the war was World War Two was coming on, so the army used them. Um, but it was a lot of weapons, three hundred weapons, and God knows how much ammunition. <laughs> like honestly, they had so much ammunition, they never really used it. That's the thing. But, you know, she was, she saved so many, you know, Irish Republican Army lives. And she was highly commemorated, as I said. Amy de Valera gave her so many medals. And she was awarded very high medals. Um, and so, you know, I don't think that story should ever go and die off. Because I feel like, you know, my family might just let her die off. But, um, you know, I want to try and commemorate. And I really hope people do remember that, you know, we should not bother to commemorate the back. And that we should commemorate people like home. You know, people who, you know, stood up, stood up and said, no. And, you know, tried their best, done whatever they could, you know, to sympathise with the weapons, to help the weapons. And, you know, trying to do as much as they can to keep the Irish free state alive. And, obviously, that's a great example. Because she saved countless lives and hiding them away from the black and tans and from the auxiliaries. And nobody's from the OIC around here. The OIC was not bad. Um, obviously, the black and tans were pretty terrible around this area. But that yeah, was across the whole country to the back of town, so terrible. Um, so, yeah, you know, I really have to salute her for, you know, un- like, uh, unbelievable service. Um, you know, it's, like, it's remarkable to take, you know, all the sacrifices she made. And, you know, giving up four years of her life, you know, to, you know, fight a war for freedom. Uh, you know, it's remarkable. It's really, really remarkable. And it's remarkable that she... She done it and she was very modest about this. The only time she really ever talked about it. And half of her children didn't know, would you believe, that she was, you know, a part of the war of independence. She only told them really in her last, you know, few years of living, like she because she knew she was gonna die. Um but she she only told them the last few years. She never wanted really that much. Like she kept very quiet that she got the medals. She really, really did keep it very quiet. Um because, you know, she was kind of at the same time, you know, she was like, it was only doing my duty, I don't want the big fuss over it. Um, obviously, she was still, to, 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 I have to say this very straight, but, and I really do not going to hold back. From the day the, war, the Irish Civil War started, to the day she died, she always was heartbroken over it. Because she knew so many people, you know, she was friends with some people who were, you know, I turned out the treaty. You know, where they get, you know, where they get the Irish Free State and obviously were imprisoned and everything like that. You know, big to fight. People, you know, people that were fighting, you know, fighting alongside her. Turned to get stone. You know, that was, that was very heartbreaking on home. Um, but it's, we're going into a very tough decade, lads. Um, the Irish War, the Civil War is going to be commemorated soon. And, you know, it's very tough. That's, that's the toughest thing in Irish history to ever talk about. The Irish Civil War. But, you know, hopefully we never forget what she done for us and for, and for all the people she saved. Um, so yeah, huge shout out to her. Um, hope she rests in peace and hope she's enjoying herself up in heaven. And she's a hero to the people of Arden. She's a hero to the people of Calvin. And she's a hero to all of us. And we should be all very tight for, for every man and every woman who served in the Irish War of Independence who fought for our freedom. Thank you.